Alright guys, so at the moment we're looking to understand a bit more about the Pythagorean identity in a trigonometry topic. Alright, so we think of the unit circle Remembering that it has a radius of 1. This point up here has a x coordinate of cos of x and a y coordinate of sine of x. Okay, so that x length is cos of x, and that y length is sine of x. So we have something that looks like a right angle triangle, where this is cos x, and this over here is sine x, and our radius being 1. Now, the reason we call it the Pythagorean identity is that if we use Pythagoras, we can say that c squared is equal to cos squared x plus sine squared x. Looks a bit messy, let's try that again. Sine squared x. Now, just as a little side, this here, sine squared x, for example, put a line down the middle. In fact, what I'll do is I'll come back to a quick blank page and just talk about sine squared x for a moment. And the reason we write the square over here is because we don't want to be confused or we want to distinguish the difference between sine of x all squared and sine of x squared. So, We don't want to write the square at the end, otherwise it's unclear which part we're trying to square, whether we're inside the function or whether we're trying to square the whole thing. So to distinguish the difference between them, we talk about the square, or we put the square in between it. Alright, now back to what we were saying before. We have our Pythagorean identity. Okay, which is that cos squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. So, this could apply to any angle. As long as they're the same for both sine and cos, then we have it's always going to be equal to 1. Alright, so how does this help us? When we are solving problems, it might occur to us that we can use the Pythagorean identity to perhaps simplify a problem. Alright, let me just write up an example. Alright. So here's our example, we've got tan of x is equal to sine squared x plus cos squared x. Alright, now it's not always going to be this obvious. Alright, we can have variations, which I'll get to slightly later. But, for now, we know that tan of x is equal to 
sine squared x plus cos squared x, that we know is equal to 1. So, now we have an equation that we can actually solve, or we know how to solve. Alright, we know that tan of pi on 4 is equal to 1, and we know that the period of tan repeats, or period of tan is pi, so it repeats every pi radians. So, x is equal to pi on 4 plus some multiple of pi where that multiple could be 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 etc. Alright, now we need to think of our domain for our solutions. So, x can be equal to pi on 4 is our smallest one. Alright, and we're just going to add, because we don't have any negative solutions here, add pi, which is 5 pi on 4, and our next one's going to be 9 pi on 4, which is bigger than 2 pi. So that's our only two solutions. Alright, the reason I'm adding 4 pi to my top line is because I've added pi, which is the same as 4 pi on 4, so that we're adding fractions, need that common denominator. Otherwise, things get a little bit complicated. So, that is our solution, and that is how we use sine squared x plus cos squared x. Alright, now, sometimes you might see a variation. I'm just going to line up this on our formula. Alright, it could be that we have... Plus should be clearer. That sine squared x is equal to one take cos squared x. So you might get something that looks like sine squared x is equal to one take sine squared x as well. And that might come up in some pattern somewhere. So you can replace sine squared x is 1 take cos squared x. Alright, try some problems from exercise 8e in the saddle text and see how it goes.